topic test on Google Classroom. So if you want to fill in the quiz while I'm going through it or you want to fill in the quiz afterwards, that's your choice, but you need to do it. Let's take a look. Okay. Always remember to fill in your name and your surname, of course, as well as your email address, which is required so that we can allocate the correct marks to the correct person. Which one of the following will occur in the human body on a cold day? Okay, so we're going to try and keep the temperatures in on a cold day. So we cannot have vasodilation in the skin. That's going to send more blood to the skin. We're going to lose more heat. So it's not going to be vasodilation. Increase the, in the activity of the sweat glands. No, I don't want to sweat. Because I don't want to lose heat, I want to keep the heat in. Decrease the evaporation of sweat from the surface of the skin. And that's the correct answer. So C is going to be my correct answer. Let's just take a look at why D is not the correct answer. Increase the blood flow to the surface of the skin. No, that happens with vasodilation. So the correct answer for this first one is C. Let's go to your second one. Apologies, let me just move up again. During an investigation, a man was placed in an airtight room. Sensors were used to monitor his breathing and heart rate. The investigators were able to change the environmental conditions in the room. After 30 minutes, the man's breathing and heart rate increased. So he's trying to get in more oxygen. That means that there's a lack of oxygen. The investigators changed the environmental conditions in the room by decreasing the light intensity. No, this is nothing to do with light intensity. Increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. Yes, because the less O2 there is, the more CO2 there is going to be. The two are opposite of one another. And also you have to remember that Breathing rate is regulated by the amount of carbon dioxide inside your blood or the amount of carbonic acid which is created by the carbon dioxide in your blood. So that is why when we have people that um, hyperventilate, we make them breathe into a bag and they breathe in that same uh, air again so that we increase the amount of carbon dioxide into their blood so that we can get their body to reset because of the amount of carbon dioxide that they are breathing in. Are we decreasing the humidity? No, we're not. That will have to do with probably temperature regulation. Are we increasing the amount of oxygen? No, because we breathing, um, uh, the breathing and the heart rate is increasing, so I can, I can get more oxygen into the blood to get the homeostasis, which I'm not getting at the moment. The so computer is messing around with me a little bit. Let's go to the third question. Negative feedback controlled and involves four stages. Give the order of the stages. Okay, so they give you four options here, so you have to group them in the correct order. Effectors bring about corrective responses. Now, that's going to be at the end somewhere. A receptor detects a change in the internal environment. Yes, so that's going to be number one. We, we sense a change. Then we're going to have a response to it. Um, it's not normal levels yet. We want to get it back to normal levels. We want hormonal or nervous changes to be sent to the effector. So that's going to be number two. Factors are then, uh, the effectors will bring about a corrective response and when you get back to normal levels. So our sequence is going to be 2, 4, and then 1 and 3. 2, 4, 1 and 3. So that's the third option over there. That's going to be the correct answer. Okay. 
Provide the correct biological term for each of the following descriptions. Write only the term next to the question number. Please remember that it's going to be very important for you to spell correctly in this section. When there's an increase uh, from normal, a corrective mechanism causes a decrease and vice versa to maintain a balanced system. So there's an increase from the normal, there's a corrective mechanism to decrease. So that's why it's decrease, it's a negative. What's happening? We're getting feedback. So it's a negative feedback mechanism. The widening of blood vessels in the, um, in the skin that increases the amount of blood flowing to the skin in humans when the environmental temperatures are high. So that is vaso which refers to the blood vessels, dilation, dilate, they, uh, they open up, they dilate. In the process of maintaining a constant internal environment within narrow limits, despite changes in the that takes place internally and externally, that's what this section is about, it's called homeostasis, homeostasis. The narrowing of blood vessels. So it's vaso and it's vasoconstriction as opposed to vasodilation. Just waiting for the bell to finish and we'll continue. Okay, and that decreases the amount of blood flowing to the skin in humans when the environmental temperature is low. Now they give you a little investigation. <clears throat> it says an investigation was carried out to determine the influence of alcohol and the volume of urine produced. Twelve healthy 23-year-old males of similar height and mass, uh, and mass participated in the investigation. So these, they have to be the same age, they have to be the same height, they have to, um, and they have to be the same mass. These are going to be controlled variables in your investigation. The investigation was conducted as follows. Now this has to do, this whole investigation has to do with the fact that alcohol is a diuretic. It makes you urinate more, it makes you lose water. Uh, we have an Afrikaans saying that uh, drink, uh, if you drink a beer, you're going to swear a lot more. It says, drink, uh, drink, uh, drink, let me just get that right. The wonder van a beer, drink een pipi vier. So it means that you drink one beer, but you urinate for four. The investigation was conducted as follows. The men were divided into two groups of six equal groups. Okay, group A and group B. The two groups ate the same food, so that's controlled variables. They had the same exercise, that's controlled variables, for the 24-hour period in testing. Why are we having controlled variables here? We're having controlled variables because I want to regulate the validity of my results. I need my results to be valid. So I can't let um, different height or different mass or, uh, or food being eaten. Certain foods have more moisture inside them, so you're going to urinate more. Um, if people exercise, they're going to lose more water, so they're going to use uh, through sweat, so they're going to urinate less. And that's not what I'm testing. I'm not testing for exercise. I'm not testing the effect of food. I'm not testing the effect of age. I'm not testing the effect of height, and I'm not testing the effect of mass. I need to keep these variables constant because otherwise they influence the results. And that, that's not what I'm testing. I'm testing the effect of alcohol consumption on the urine levels. For 24-hour periods, so that's another thing, the time is constant. Each group was given the following, uh, following to drink after a 24-hour period. Group A, one liter of alcohol-free beer, as uh, so a beer with no alcohol, and then group B, a liter of alcoholic beer. And then urine was collected from each man every hour. Okay, and then assume that the volume of urine collected is equal to the volume of urine produced. The results of this investigation is shown in the table below. After one hour, group A had 599 milliliters and group B 643. 
Group A, 413 after two hours, and 504 after, uh, for Group B in milliliters, and after three hours, 112 and 132. So this whole time, Group B produced more urine. What is the independent variable in this investigation? My independent variable, ladies and gentlemen, will be the amount of alcohol intake. The dependent variable, and I changed this question, please go take a look. The dependent variable is the amount of urine produced. Data factors that remain constant, other than the ones already mentioned, keep only one or two words and keep the um, uh, in the following three answers. So we said those that we keep constant, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to just go back to that sentence. The age of the males, they're all healthy, their health levels, they're all of similar height, they're all the same mass, they ate the same food, and they did the same amount of exercise, and they did it over the same amount of time for the investigation. So those are all your controlled variables in this investigation. And what do we call this type of variable that we keep constant in investigation? We call it the controlled variables. Why, when I keep these variables constant and in a question constant, I ensure that uh, the validity, the validity of my results. I ensure the validity of the results. When I increase, uh, when I increase the sample size and get an average, I ensure the reliability of the results. Based on the results, explain how the intake of alcohol influences the secretion of ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Uh, in the bi kidneys, um, in the adrenal glands, and consequently the volume of urine that is produced in the kidneys. Complete the question below by choosing and filling in the correct words uh, give, given. Alcohol, does it inhibit um, or increase the secretion of ADH? It inhibits the secretion of ADH. So we don't reabsorb as much water. Less ADH in the blood causes the renal tubules to, and the collecting dust to become less permeable. Less. Why? Because less blood, uh, less um, water is being reabsorbed back into the blood. And is less or more water reabsorbed? Less water is reabsorbed into the blood. And so we are producing a larger amount of Then, next question is on thermoregulation. The diagram below represents parts of the human skin. Here we have vasoconstriction, which will be on a hot day. Here we have vasodilation on a, on a cold day. And there we have the sweat gland producing some sweat for us to cool the body down. Identify part labeled A. That was your sweat gland. Give the numbers of the diagrams, 1, 2, and 3, that represents the body's response to the environmental temperatures. Uh, if high environmental temperatures, I'm going to get vasodilation, because I'm going to try and get rid of that heat, and I'm going to produce more sweat. So the first answer is diagram 2, and diagram 3 there. To get rid of 2 and 3. Okay, then, next one. Apologies, you see me a moment. Okay, let's continue. Okay, then it asks you, let me just make sure this, this is the first question, right, here's the next one. Would the skin release more heat through the radiation in diagram 1 or diagram 3? Vasodilation, diagram 3 will release more heat. Okay, that's over there. 
and then give the number of the diagram one two three that represents vasoconstriction that's diagram one and i just want to show that to you you can see that the blood vessels are a lot narrower over here over there so this is vasoconstriction that's vasodilation which part of the brain controls thermal regulation in humans that's the hypothalamus 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 there we go the spelling correct uh, the diagram below represents a skin showing transverse sections through the blood vessels when a person is exposed to different environmental conditions. Uh, so blood vessels are under normal conditions, blood vessels and the um, environment of X, and this is cold conditions. This is vasoconstriction, smaller blood vessels, and this is under environmental Y. So this is vaso. Apologies. Vasodilation. And this is under hot conditions. The environmental condition in X is, let's take a look, in X is cold. What is represented by the arrows is heat lost. Heat loss, amount of heat lost. Now in the process that is represented by the diagram that diagrams that represents a constant body temperature, that is thermoregulation. Please don't say homeostasis. Homeostasis is the regulation of all internal environments, not just body temperature. Okay. And that is it for today, great class. Enjoy the lesson and please go and complete.